Oh, we're starting now. Okay. You can cut it when you're ready. This is on automatically, huh? I think so, yeah. yeah it's green. Mukam karoti vachalam bangum langayati girim yat kripa tamaham bande shi gurundi nataranam this is a famous verse you know used by our gurus saying that you know by the mercy of guru you know the dumb they can speak and the lame they can cross mountains you know? and yeah, this is the general meaning but um shula shudamar she gives a very wonderful explanation of that verse that that if we if we have actual darshan of the Lord, you know, of Guru, divinity, then we will be struck dumb, you know, we will not be able to speak, you know. You know, faced with that wonder and that divine reality, then what can we say, right? We are struck dumb, we cannot speak. But, you know, Shri Guru gives us the, the power to speak, you know, gives by His grace we can say something. And Gurudev also once, he mentioned this verse, this, not a verse, it's an expression, Ganga Jale Ganga Puja, you know, means that we are worshipping the Ganga with Ganga water. <laughs> Look, here comes the rain right now. <laughs> but I'm thinking like, you know, on this day, you know, we must glorify our Guru, but actually we are so unqualified, you know. We are so unqualified, we cannot say anything about Him. You know, we are like children you know, we have some appreciation for our parents, but we don't really know who they are, actually, right? But by their grace, you know, by the grace of Shri Guru, then, then some capacity may, may come, you know, to say something. Like also, Dhruva Maharaj, right? We hear Dhruva Maharaj, he, when he, you know, he did so much austerity, and then... The Lord appeared to him and he wanted to glorify the Lord, but he didn't have the capacity. And then the Lord blessed him. I think he like touched him on the head with something and he blessed him. And then he could give so many wonderful prayers. You know? <laughs> so, so I'm sitting here thinking, you know, what can we say about our guru? We have no capacity at all, you know. But by His grace, you know, He may give us some capacity to appreciate. You know, Gurudev would mention sometimes the, the analogy of a, a lice, lice, right? A louse on the head is very close. <laughs> but there's no association there, actually, you know, on a conscious level, you know. And so we, we feel like that you know we had some time with gurudev but we were just like an insect <laughs> you know what could we actually get you know but gurudev also mentioned you know even if an insect spends a long time with a great vaishnava then <laughs> even that insect may get something may get some quality you know? <laughs> so But it is, you know, it is difficult to properly glorify Guru. Guru Dave mentioned once, you know, that he was glorifying Bhakti even Thakur, and he said that he said, but if he said, but if you know, if I I'm I'm trying to glorify Bhakti Vinod, and but instead of making a deity, I may make a monkey. He, he said something like this. Right? <laughs> It is not an easy thing, you know. So we are advised actually to follow the glorification that has come from those who have higher vision, right? Anu kirtam, we, this phrase we hear, 
here. Anu Kirtan means Kirtan that is in the line of following. Anu, the word Anu is indicating here following. So that is our only hope actually. You know, because otherwise it is like, like a child may say, oh my mommy, she makes the best cheese sandwiches in the world. <laughs> or my mommy makes wonderful pancakes, right? Oh, my mother's the best mother because she lets me watch cartoons <laughs> on Saturdays. This is the level of appreciation of a child, right? <laughs> Maybe their parent is like a famous, you know, artist or mathematician or maybe the president of a country right some great philosopher but the child doesn't know anything you say, oh my my mommy makes very good chocolate cake you know? so this is like our position you know oh we love Gurudev so much Gurudev was so kind right? <laughs> Gurudev was so charming Gurudev had such a nice smile right? <laughs> Gurudev was so nice to me when I sat in front of Gurudev, he made me feel so good, right? <laughs> this is our level of appreciation. <laughs> so we are, like, we are like children. But actually, his, his charm, that is, that is like his secret weapon to pull us in, to reel us in. You know? But how much more depth is there? How much profundity is there? Then we have to look to the glorification of, of the great souls, right? What was their appreciation? And then, you know, who is the top in that category? This Om Vishnu Pad Shri Bhakti Rakshat Shidhar Dev Gosami March, right? <laughs> he, he he is the most qualified you know to to give some certificate right to who is Srila Govinda Maharaj you know? and Srila Sridhar he you know who is Srila Sridhar you know Srila Sridhar he was recognized by his guru right and in, in that mystic way at the time of his departure, Saraswati Thakur like handed the, you know, many witnesses were there and they had that feeling, right, that he was handing the, the current to Srila Sridhar Maharaj, right? So that is Srila Sridhar Maharaj and, and he, you know, he gave all... He put all his confidence in, in our Guru Dev Srila Govinda Maharaj. And, and he wrote this, you know, he he gave the 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 idea that for the composition of Srila Guru Dev's Pranam Mantra also, right? And he writes there in the first line, Gorva Bhishta Sabudakam, right? That the He's saying that, that he fulfilled all of the desires, the cherished desires of his guru. Srila <laughs> Sridhar Maharaj, he, you know, when he began Sri Chichanya Saraswat Mat, the rain came only for a moment, it left. Very it funny. When you spoke about One moment. <laughs> and it went. <laughs> Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he began Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mahad as a, you know, as a small thatched hut, right, 1942, on the banks of the Ganges. And, and he, and he you know, we've seen some photos, right, very simple, small plays, and a few persons helping him. And, and he wrote this shloka, right, this Srimak Chaitanya Saraswata Mahad. We have it here on the wall. Shrimak Chaitanya Saraswata Matavada Udgita Kirti Jayashim Vibrat Sambhati Ganga Tatanikata Kola Dvipa Nava Dvipa Kola Ajiraje Yacha Shigora Saraswata Yarata Gorgata Garnanti Nityam Rupa Nuga Shri Krita Mati Guru Guranga Dadha Jitashim Very, you know, very elevated, you know, very fine, you know. 
expression of what are the ideals of Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, you know, very, very fine conception. You know, this is this is something that is very unique about what we have and this connection we have that you know, you can find so many generic presentations of Krishna consciousness, of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, of Bhakti Yoga, right? There are so many available on the market, but but Srila Sridharmarsh is giving something very, very fine, very precise, you know, and very strictly in the line of Saraswati Thakur, Bhakti Sananta Saraswati, and Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what is this Sri Chaitanya Saraswati Mat? You know, is this Matavada, he describes it as the best of all mats, right? the best of all missions. And this is like a small little hut, right? <laughs> it's shining, Sambhati Ganga, to, and the banks of the Ganges, it is shining brightly. And, and, the, and the, vic, the Vijaya Sri here is referring to a victory flag, right, which is flying high. Udgita Kirtir, which is Udgita Kirtir, which is, and that victory flag is announcing the glory of this glorious Mat, you know, profoundly, loudly, profoundly spreading the glories of this, of this Mat. And, and it is in, where is this Mat? It is in Gupta Govardhan, hidden Govardhan. You know, what is Govardhan? Govardhan is the place of our highest ideal, right? Our gurus have expressed this aspiration, right? And this is also in, mentioned in the in Rupa Goswami's Upadeshamrita. Right? That, you know, Radha Kund is the highest place and we will stay one step below in Govardhan. And we will go to serve our gurus in Radha Kund and then return to Govardhan. So this is our this is the place of our aspiration. This is our ideal. So that area, because Navadvip is non-different with Vrindavan, right? Then that area of Navadvip is corresponding with hidden Govardhan. Now this Koladvip is this island in Navadvip corresponding with Govardhan. So this Gupta Govardhan, hidden Govardhan, there precisely, Shula Shudamar shows. It is it is all it's all sinking. Right? Ra- what is the prayer of Raghunath Das Goswami? Right? What is the pr- Raghunath, who is our Prayojan Acharya, the Acharya who has shown us our highest ideal, Radha Dasyam, right? Raghunath, he's aspiring, Nijanikata Nivasam Dehi Govardhan Atam. He's aspiring for service in Govardhan, right? It's Nama Sheshtam Manumapi Shachi Putra Machas Rupa. And so Govardhan, Raghunath is aspiring for that, you know, Rupa Goswami. You know. So this is Saraswati Thakur. So Srila Maharaj very precisely has pinpointed, this is where we'll establish my mat. And is also Aparad Banjam Pat, you know, where Mahaprabhu came and you know, expressed the greatest degree of mercy, of magnanimity place of the greatest and most intensified mercy where all offenses are forgiven, right? And then and then what happens there in this in this glorious place that's shining on the banks of the Ganges and Gupta Govardhan, Aparad Banja, what happens there? Yacha there Shri Gaur Saraswata Mati Nirata, Gaur Gata Grananti. Those who are in the line of, of, Shri, of Shri Bhakti Sananta Saraswati, you know, Shri, Shri, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but not just any line. There are many lines coming from Mahaprabhu, right? There are many, when you say Gaudiya, you know, it's like you narrow down, you narrow down. There are so many conceptions in the world. You narrow down, you narrow down, you narrow down. You, you get a little slice, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, right? But then within that little slice, there are many different lines, right? 
So then specifically those in the line of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, right, who, who, who came out with the real essence of what is Mahaprabhu's conception, what is Mahaprabhu's mission. So those in the line of Saraswati Thakur who drew out the real inner essence of Mahaprabhu's movement and modernized that for this age, for this current age, you know, and established how we will practice in this age. So those in the line of Mahagora Saraswati, you know, they're the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the line of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. You know, they are there, and what do they do? Gora Gata right? They are singing the glories of Mahaprabhu. They're spreading the message of Mahaprabhu. We can also say those whose heads are sold, <laughs> those who are sold, right, to the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, Srila Rupa Goswami, their heads are sold there, they have nowhere else, <laughs> and they're always chanting those divine glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his divine message and spreading his movement, expanding his divine mission. That's what they're busy doing there. The nityam rupanuga kutamati guru gonanga radhaji tasha. They are rupanuga. You know. They are the followers of Sri Rupa and guru gonanga radhaji tasha. And they hold this aspiration in their heart to serve guru gonanga radha govinda. This is the aspiration that they hold within their hearts. So Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he wrote this verse, right, in 1942, as he's beginning, Sri Mat. And his, some of his godbrothers laughed at him right. because they thought, oh, this small little hut on the banks of the Gan, this wrote and written this big, big shloka, this big, big verse, very, very grand, you know. And he got an expensive bamboo pole and he hoisted it. And, and for many years it was like that. Not just a few years, but for many years. You know, you know like for the next you know, 30 years, 40 years. You know. So Srila Maharaj, what is the point here? That Srila Maharaj, he had this vision, right? But who was going to fulfill that vision, right? No, and then, then, then comes Srila Govinda Maharaj, right? As a young teenage boy. And he was the one, you know, who... And, you know, Srila Govinda Maharaj wasn't just someone who, who could make buildings, right? No, but it wasn't just that he was a, like a blind instrument who was fulfilling his guru's desire. That, of course, that is also a very great thing. But Srila Govinda Maharaj also had his own wealth. Srila Govinda Maharaj also could fully absorb and appreciate, you know, what is this message? You know, and from the very beginning, you know, Srila Srila Maharaj mentioned, you know, he's like on a few occasions, you know, he's bringing this from another life, from previous You know, there was one occasion when, when 1947, right? Our Gurudev, he joined us, he's, he joined in like around May, right? In the Shringa Chatur Dashi. He's like 17 years old. Um, and, um, and like after the first week, Srila Sridhamarsh could recognize him. He made this announcement that, oh, if he, he'll, he, if he can stay with me, he will be my successor, right? Within one week, right? <laughs> and everybody around, they, you know, they all got a little agitated. Like, oh, hang on. Like, who is this guy? Who's this imposter, right? And then, and Gurudev mentioned, actually, my fighting life began from that day. After Srila Sridhamarsh made that announcement. He said, my fighting life began because it attracted all this envy to him. 
but but what I was going to say is then after some months later, right? Then a few actually like six weeks or something like May June yeah like two months later or a little less in July they go to Puri Rathiatra. Then Shri Shri Maharaj gave second initiation. Normally you would wait six months for first initiation, right? But Shri Shri Maharaj gave him first initiation very soon, and then just like two months or less. Later, he gave second initiation, and Sri Gorendu, Sri Gorendu, right? That name, Gorendu Brahmachari. But then after that, they went to Vrindavan, and and in Vrindavan, Shri Sridharmaj personally took Shri Gurudev around, like to all of the holy places of Vrindavan, Govardhan, Arshana. And but there was one occasion, and sometimes it would just be the two of them. Sometimes they'd be with a few other brahmacharis, and and sometimes Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj would join them. But um, but there was this one occasion was Shila Gurudev, Param Guru Maharaj, Shila Shida Maharaj, and Krishna Das Babaji was with them that day, and and Shila Shida Maharaj he gave he he went into an explanation of the final verse of Shikshashtakam. No? Isashlishiva paradatam pinashtumam adarshanan marmatam grotuva yatatata va vidada to lampato matprananatas tu saeva napada. No, it's just which is describing the acme of dedication, of surrender, right? That, oh Krishna, you may embrace me or you may reject me. You know, but you will always be the only Lord of my life. Right? It is expressing the highest point of Sharanagati, surrender. It is Radharani's expression, ultimately. And, and Guru Shula, Shula Sridhar Maharaj, or Param Guru Maharaj, he, went in, he was giving a very, very profound explanation of this verse. And, and Krishna's Babaji Maharaj was there, and he was very surprised. And he said, oh, he's a young boy. Like, he's just joined a few months ago, 17-year-old boy. And you're telling all these very high things to him. And, and Shila, Babaji Maharaj, he mentioned, and Shila, Shila Shida, and Shila Shida Maharaj, he, he said very firmly, oh, he, he already crossed over everything in previous, previous lives. And, and, and he said, he said, an old man will not get this, but he can get this. <laughs> you know? And Babaji Maharaj, he was, he was shocked. You know? Why is Sridhar Maharaj is giving this high explanation to this new boy? You know? He could not understand. You know? Because it was very surprising you know, that this young newcomer could grasp things so immediately. There was another occasion we heard from Gurudev when, you know, our Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, he, he was very expert in Sanskrit poetry. But he, you know, he, it was something that he kind of hid, you know. He, he didn't, um, he, like they had this magazine, Gaudiya Darshan, Srila Gurudev began this magazine. And, and, and often like to, Make, make more variety. He would he would write many things, most of it himself, but he would put other people's names, so it looks more diverse, right? And so often he would write some original, like he wrote a number of pranam mantras for the God Brothers of Shri Maharaj, and he would publish them, but he wouldn't put his name or he put someone else's name or like that, and he would write articles and. But there was one, some Sanskrit composition and, um, that our Gurudev had written. And, and Krishna's Babaji couldn't believe that Srila Govinda Maharaj had written it. And, and because Krishna's Babaji, we can also add on to this, that he had very high, high regard for Srila Srila Maharaj and also specifically for the writing of Srila Sridhar Maharaj. There was one occasion, you know, Babaji Maharaj, Babaji Maharaj was like a wandering 
wandering Babaji, right? He, he, did, he never quite gelled with Saraswati Thakur's program, <laughs> like, of like, we're part of a preaching mission and we've got a particular program that we're following. Babaji Marj never could quite get with that, right? He was a little independent. He liked to be like a wandering mendicant. And, and Saraswati Thakur also didn't always appreciate that. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> but he was a great devotee, Babaji Marsh. But he had his own style, you know. But anyway, you know, so he would travel. He'd spend some time in the year in Vrindavan, some time in Navadvip, and he would stay in the, the mots of different god brothers. And, but when he was in Navadvip area, he would always go to visit Hapanya, the birthplace of Sridhar Marsh. And Srila Srinamarsh asked him one time, like, why, why do you always go there? Like, you know, like, you know, like it's my, my birthplace, and you know, like, what's so special about that? You're my god brother, you know, it's not like you're my disciple, you know. And, and Babaji Maharaj answered, Krishna's Babaji, he answered, because I consider that your writings are non-different from those of Rupa Goswami. That was what he said, Krishna's Babaji. Your writings are non-different from those of Srila Rupa Goswami. No, Srila Rupa Goswami, whose writing was personally glorified by Mahaprabhu. Right? So, then, so then our Gurudev, he also could write at that level as a young boy. No, like, you know, early 20s or something. Srila Sridhar had him trained. Srila Sridhar like Srila Sridhar saw who Srila Govinda Maharaj was and he gave all his attention to training him and preparing him for his future role like as an Acharya, as a Rupa Nuga Acharya. And so he, he was always like, he always had some program for Srila Gurudev, like this teacher, this teacher here, this teacher there. You know, in Mathura there was one teacher. Sometimes Srila Sridhar would personally train him. In, in practicing Sanskrit or in reading some of the scriptures. And but so Gurudev, he could also write at, at the same level as Srila Sridhar Maharaj. And so when, so when, when Babaji Maharaj was told, oh, this was written by Govinda Maharaj, Babaji Maharaj couldn't believe it. No, like, no Sridhar Maharaj must have written this, he thought. And... You know, and, and you know, and, oh, Sridhar Maharaj is sick, and Sridhar Maharaj is saying his disciple wrote it, you know, but actually he wrote it. And our Gurudev was actually quite hurt about that. Not for his own ego, but, but our Gurudev's feeling was that, you know, if you really believe in who Guru Maharaj is and what is the power of his mercy, then you should, be able, you should believe that his mercy can make even someone like me into a great poet, right? That is the power of his mercy. So our Gurudev, he wasn't happy about that. And like, like how great is Guru Maharaj that he can transform even someone like me, is our Gurudev's humble feeling, into a great writer. So our Gurudev told him, then I will prove to you. <laughs> I'll write something right in front of you. So you give me a topic, and I'll sit right here, and I'll do it. <laughs> so they did that. And it, in Babaji Maharaj, he chose um, the topic of some, about something about Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And, and then our Gurudev wanted to know, like in the mood of, I think it was in the mood of separation or in union. And, and then and Babaji Maharaj gave some... Instru specific instruction. Then our Gurudev sat like 20 minutes, he wrote. No. <laughs> and he wrote it in this very difficult meter, poetic meter also. And Babaji Maharaj was completely impressed. You know? And there was another story too we heard that, you know, the Gurudev had this Parker pen, this special Parker pen that was like, it's like a special pen, and, and um, it, it belonged to, it, it was originally, it belonged to Rama Didi, the sister of Srila Sridhar Maharaj. 
And, um, and there was one occasion, I, I, it was, we have that composition, Shigu Prashashti, it's a composition and glorification of Srila Sridhar Maharaj. And I think it was like Srila Sridhar Maharaj's appearance day approaching, um, and Gurudev, he'd been, he was behind in, um, in preparing for the magazine, Gaudiya Darshan, and they wanted to make a special edition, right? And so maybe it was Rama Didi, she asked Srila Gurudev, like, oh, are you going to write something? Like, something like that. But, but our Gurudev said, oh, yes, I need to write something. So he sat right then. She gave him her pen, this par- special, expensive Parker pen. And then... And our Gurudev sat in like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. He wrote it out, this wonderful Sanskrit. It's a little long, too. It's not so short. You know? And she was so happy and ecstatic. You know, she gave him, oh, I will never take this pen back. You keep this pen. Our Gurudev was so proud about that pen, you know, this special Parker pen. <laughs> so Srila Govinda Maharaj, she was the jewel Right, of Srila Sridhar Maharaj. Precious, mm-hmm. precious jewel. And you know, so Srila Govinda, Gorva Bhishta Sapurakam, right? Srila Govinda Maharaj, he came and he, you know, what was the vision of Srila Sridhar Maharaj? Our Gurudev fulfilled that, you know, in the most profound way. So, you know, in a, in a physical, manifest way. and you know, like actively preaching and, and collecting and expanding the mission. But then also, you know, having that, that rich, you know, heart, that ri- rich Vaishnava, Rupa Nuga, you know, level of realization, right? You know, upholding the dignity and the glory of the lineage of Srila Rupa Goswami. Right. That um, what is that um that line? Gorva bishas budakam guru ganeya shisha sambushi chincha chincha samasta vedna shirupa pantanugam. Right. Shri Shridhar describes him in this line as the perfect follower, in the line of shirupa. No. And and also this line is there chincha. Achincha samasta veda nipunam. That he he was nip, nipun. Nipun is expert. Saraswati Thakur, he um he glorified Srila Sridhar Maharaj as Shastra Nipun. Right? As expert in the Shastra, expert in the scripture. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj he he described our Guru Dev as Chincha. Achincha samasta veda nipunam. That he's an expert, nipun, in all that is. Um, chincha means conceivable, as well as what is achincha, what is inconceivable. Samasta, all. You know. So it's a very interesting line, right? Interesting glorification. You know, like. Showing that he he can appreciate both. No, he's expert both in like like what is like. Sorry, Sean. Could could you would you maybe you can sit over there. <laughs> um, that he's expert. No, oh, just sorry, just because you're mumbling something, it's a little distracting. <laughs> Like, <clears throat> our Guru Dev had this very special quality that he, like, he was very, very sharp, like, in a human sense, right? He was very aware, like, in a, in a very practical human sense, you know? But then, on the other hand, you know, he was also situated on a very high plane of spiritual realization. It was like, like both sides. In many like practical, you know, matters, he was very expert. You know, management. Because often, like, like in the case of someone who's a great saint, 
you know, they may be like, you know, they may be very expert in the teachings and the siddhanta, but they may be, you know, not so good with the practical day to day, right? It's understandable, right? And they're, they're kind of like a, a little removed, right? They're living in their own, like, divine bubble kind of thing, right? It's, it's understandable. But Srila Govinda Maharaj wasn't like that. Srila Govinda Maharaj was very, was very much on the ground. You know, like one of our senior devotees described him as being like a man of the world. You know, like he knew, he knew what's up. You know, very, very sharp, very discerning. You know? And very, very clever. He was an incredible diplomat also. And like, there were many interesting, like the way that Gurudev moved, there was so much intrigue, you know, in the, in the Gaudiya Math. You know, so much intrigue and there was so much fighting that went on. And, and, and Gurudev was very, very, like, sharp and he knew everyone very well, you know. Like sometimes, like, better than the disciples, he would know the guru... Of like, like the god brothers of Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he would know them better than their disciples did. You know, very, very discerning, you know, very sharp. You know. There was, um, there, I'm thinking of a number of examples, but there was this one, one, I'll mention a couple, there was one occasion, and this is also linked to the next line in Gurudev's Pranam Mantra, this um, um, Guru Ganera Shisha Sambushitam, like he, Guru Gorva Bhishta, he fulfilled the desires of his Guru fully, but also Guru Ganera, Guru Gan means the Guru group, right? The God brothers, they also gave their full blessings. They were also very pleased with him. And that's a. That's a higher level of praise. Because it's e easier for a guru to say, oh, my disciple is so wonderful, right? The guru is a little biased, right? But if then his god brothers are also saying, oh, yeah, your disciple is so wonderful, then you have to pay attention, right? You have to respect that. So Srila Sridhar specifically mentions that, you know. But, but in terms of like Gurudev's sharpness, you know, like, like there was one occasion, um, this was when after there had been this 12-year dispute in the Gaudiya Math about how the division of the temples would be made, the 64 temples around India, after Saraswati Thakur left. And this was going on for 12 years in the courts, like who will run which temple, it was very ugly. Finally, after 12 years, they asked, they requested Srila Sridhar Maharaj, like, you mediate, you make, the, you make the division, you decide. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj came up with a very harmonious solution. And, and then there was this meeting that was held, and everyone, like all the different acharyas, they were coming together for this meeting. It was like a very significant meeting, sealing the deal type of thing, right? <laughs> And, but one of the God brothers, the, the leading ones, he, you know, like there was, there was like crazy stuff that went on. He was afraid of being poisoned. And, and there were sweets that were passed out at the end. And, um, and, and he wouldn't take the sweet. I think it was a rasgula. And, 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 in, and in, the, like, in the particular context, it was looking bad, like the fact that he wasn't eating that. It was like, it was, it was awkward, you know. And so it was like there was this awkwardness and, you know, it's like, like he doesn't trust it or something, right? And something like that. And, and so, so there was a bit of a buzz, like, oh, he's not taking the sweet. <laughs> And so our Gurudev, our Gurudev could, and, 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 and no, nobody was quite sure why, you know, and or what to do. And, and so our Gurudev, he went and whispered to Srila Sh Maharaj, oh, if you will give him the sweet, he will take it. 
<laughs> so our Gurudev went. So then Shilashin Maharaj, he, he was surprised, like, oh, really? But Shilashin Maharaj did that. He went and he took the sweet and he gave it personally. And then, and then he accepted it. You know, because Gurudev knew, like, if, like, if it's coming from the hand of my Guru Maharaj, he will, Shilashin Maharaj had this special position and respect, and that he will definitely, and that harmonized everything, you know. There, there was this other occasion. I really like this, um, this story. That there was this time they were at. I, I told this story when we were in India at Chaitanya Mat. There was some program arranged at Chaitanya Mat, which was um, which was under the care of Tirtha Maharaj, Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj, who had previously been. Kunja Babu, right? And who was Kunja Babu? Kunja Babu was the number one supreme manager of the Gaudiya Mat, absolutely expert in management and canvassing and organizing, absolute map, just brilliant, right? Ananta Vasudev was the number one in the conception and the Siddhanta, and then Kunja Babu was the number one in the practical management. And so there was some big gathering there and, and different groups, different missions were coming together in Saraswati Thakur's line, group. Um, and so our Guru Dave was there and, and then it was, um, and at one point Guru Dave was, you know, Guru Dave's moving around talking to different persons and Guru Dave was in one area and, and the group, Chaitanya Saraswati's group, was all seated in a, another place, some distance away. And it was prashadam time, and everyone's being served prashadam. And then Saki Babu, one of the god brothers of Srila Srinivasa, she mentioned to our Guru Dev, "Oh, maybe you should go and check, check on the, our, your devotees from the ma. Like, are they being served properly? Are they being taken care of?" And and our and our Guru Dev told him, you know. If I go there and, and check that my group is being taken care of properly, that will be like an insult to Tirtha Marsh. Because then I'm saying Tirtha Marsh isn't doing his job properly. <laughs> you know, like to, to who is Tirtha Marsh? He is the most expert in management. Right? And so if I go like to check my group is okay, then I'm implying he's not taking care of our group, he's not doing his job properly. And, and Saki Babu, Saki Charan, he was so impressed with that. He was so impressed. And he said, oh, you are so brilliant. <laughs> he said, you will make me mad. Will you make me mad? You are so brilliant. You are so sharp. You know? <laughs> and there was this other time, another occasion, um, there was this photo. Gurudev was visiting... Bhakti Saranga Goswami Marsh, I believe it was in his, one of his mats. Bhakti Saranga Goswami, who was one of the, another one of the great, powerful members of the Gaudiya Mat, major preacher, powerful preacher, senior, very senior disciple of Srila Sarasati Thakur. And Gurudev, Srila Govinda Marsh had a very affectionate relationship with him, and he was visiting him, and, and he was in his room, and and there was this photo of um, showing Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Bhakti Saranga Goswami Marsh, and then also this British dignitor dignitary in the time of the British rule, right? Sir John Anderson. And, um, and Gurudev is looking at this picture. <laughs> if you heard me tell this story before. <laughs> And, um, and Gurudev sees that Saraswati Thakur is wearing a garland and Sir, and Sir John Anderson is wearing a garland. And, um, and Bhakti Saranga Goswami is not wearing a garland. And so, so Gurudev is looking at the picture and says, something's wrong here. Something doesn't, something doesn't fit in this picture. And, and he says, why, why aren't you wearing a garland? And Goswami Maharaj says, what? What are you talking about? You know, why do I need a garland? 
you know, Prabhupada, Sarasti Thakur, he's our guru. He has a garland. Sir John Anderson's the guest of honor. He is a garland. Why do I need a garland? And Gurudev said, no, 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 no. I know what happens. He said that you had a garland. And Sarasati Thakur had a garland, of course. And there was another garland that was supposed to come for the guest. But the, but the, the man delivering it was late. And so you gave your garland <laughs> to Sir John Anderson. <laughs> and Goswami Maharaj was so impressed. <laughs> he said, and, and he said to him, you have crossed Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Because Vishwanath Chakravarti, he's famous for giving these fine, fine, detailed explanations on the scriptures. Like he has commentaries on many of the scriptures, like going into, like he'll, he analyze, he like kind of pe pieces them apart, right? And goes into fine explanation of many fine points. And so Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is famous for this. And so, so Goswami Maharaj said, oh, you have crossed Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. <laughs> and we also see, you know, like, the way that, you know, going just going back to this point about Gurudev's ability to navigate both worlds, right? The the material and the spiritual. You know, we can also see that in the way that Srila Govinda Maharaj was so, how can we say, you know, he was so um, successful in his worldwide preaching. You know, like he could connect with everyone. He could meet people on any level, you know. You know this qu and this quality of being a paramahamsa that is also, you know, connected here, right? That he could he could overlook anyone's mundane aspect and just connect with that inner, you know, spiritual nature. And he but he could also he could also he would do it in this very sophisticated, deft way where he's, he's like connecting with them through some mundane medium, right? Like, for example, when, when he visited Germany, right? Then he's talking, I listened to one of his talks, and he's talking about some of the German philosophers and the, the German relations, the German interest and in the Vedic culture. And he, I was blown away, you know? And then he listened to his talks when he went to Russia for the first time. He's talking about the long history of the relationship between Russia and India and, and such and such Russian diplomat visiting India at such and such time and, and, and it's just incredible, you know, like, like he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's aware, right, he's aware of the world and he's using that as a way to connect with people, you know, like he's, Everybody felt that in front of Srila Govinda. It's like, he gets me. You know? This is actually something that's so meaningful, like to feel understood, to feel appreciated. Like, I understand you, I get you, I'm with you. Like, just that is so profound. It's such a profound feeling. And Srila Govinda Maharaj had that power. And he was very mystical also, that he could touch upon things in people's lives, you know, which they, they never told him, you know. So it's like he would connect with you on your level, in your language, you know, and then, and then going to that deeper core of the spiritual part of everything. Bhakti Lalita told me about this one time, and it was in Russia, and, and there, was, there was some circus performers who visited. I think Avadut Marsh had arranged some event, maybe some elephants or something, you know. And, um, and, and, and Gurudev and these elephant trainers, they came and met Srila Govinda Marsh. And, and Srila Gurudev s sat with them for an hour discussing the significance of elephants you know, as described in the Vedas, like quoting so many verses, and you know, I mean, it's in, it's phenomenal, you know. And he was like that everywhere that he went, you know. 
everywhere that he went, he would charm people, capture them, connect with them, you know, in this very he simultaneously human and divine way, you know. Like we heard from Janarda Marge how he was interviewed, I think it was a lady in Mexico, a radio show, and she interviewed Gurudev, and, or maybe it was Colombia, I can't remember, but, but she afterwards she said, you're the most charming person I've ever met. The Mexican government delegated these security guards. They gave very high honor to Gurudev, and that shows us what a pious country Mexico is. You know? they, gave, they designated a few security guards. They ended up taking initiation. <laughs> like after, you know, after a few weeks with him, or whatever it was, 10 days, you know, then they're, it's gone, they're over, it's over. You know, their hearts are captured. <clears throat> This was his power. And he was very, you know, he was very, just very on the ground, you know, like, you know, like, like, like he talked, or Gurudev talked about, like, Gurudev wanted his disciples to be like that too. Like, he wanted them to be people who could move in the world, not, not, you know, awkward, Hare, fanatic Hare Krishnas who don't know how to hold a normal conversation, you know or don't have an integrated, this is the point, an integrated Krishna consciousness, right? And he talked about making a school, <clears throat> uh, like he wanted to have like a, a school where we would, you know, teach devotional classes, but he said, similar, like side by side, also he wanted like the government curriculum, you know, and he, and he also said he wanted, it wouldn't be only devotees there, but outside children, non-devotees, non-Vaishnavas would also be welcome and accommodated. That was, what, that was the vision that he had. You know? And he gave those kinds of instructions to my mother actually about how she was raising her children, you know, including myself. You know, that they should be integrated. They shouldn't, he, sa he said something like, not too Hare Krishna. He said something like that. You know, they keep them in school. You know, at one time she was saying, oh, I can move them closer to the temple in East London. I, and, but Gurudev was saying, they're in a good school where they are. You know, don't disturb them. You know, he wanted, he wanted his disciples to be integrated. You know, and sometimes there were, Young devotees who say, "Oh, Gurudev, I want to, I want to leave school and come live with you in the temple." Gurudev, Gurudev told one young devotee in California, "Education is your, education is like life insurance. You know, you know, like now you may make an emotional decision, right? But then later on, then you may regret it, right? Of course, Gurudev would give different instructions to different people, but that was his general instruction." So he wanted people to be, wanted devotees to be integrated, you know, in the world. So this was his very special quality. And he was also very comfortable with being with lower class people, we can say. <laughs> like Srila Srila Maharaj could not. Srila Swami Maharaj Prabhupada even, like, Okay, it's true. Srila Swami Maharaj, he, he, um, like he tolerated so much in those early years, like sharing the fridge with, the, with um, meat eaters and so on. But we also see in his later years, you know, he, he would eat alone. You know? He wouldn't sit and eat with his disciples. You know? And Srila Srila Maharaj also. Right? They're, they're accustomed to a particular standard, right? But Srila Govinda Maharaj, he, you know, he, he would sit and he would eat off the plates, you know, the Western devotees. You know. Janarda Maharaj tells that story. And, and he talked also about like breaking the Brahmanism of Guru Maharaj. You know, like he was pleased because he convinced Srila Srila Maharaj to have a little finger taste of that pizza that that Western lady had made, right? And Gurudev said, oh, I broke Guru Maharaj's Brahmanism. Yeah. Like, that was Gurudev. Yeah. 
Gorva Bhishta Sapudakam Guru Ganera Shisha Sambhushitam Chincha Chincha Samastavira Nipanam Shiru Papantanagam Govindaviram Ujvalam Varatanam Bhaktiambitam Sundaram Vande Vishwa Guruncha Div Bhagavad Prem Nohi Vijapadam And finally in this verse the, the Prem no is um this prem no he bija that he's giving the seed, right of Krishna prema. One day Vishwa Guru, right? He's the guru of the whole world, and he's spreading these seeds, right? You know, and and you know our feeling now and the now we are in the moment of separation, right? At present. But our feeling is that, you know, you know, actually he gave us the seeds and our duty now is to take care of that, right? To, to, to water that, to nourish that, to fertilize that. Right? We have to cultivate that now. And we were mentioning yesterday, right, that... that there's that dual feeling that, that, you know, when Gurudev left, there was that feeling, like, oh, it's, it's, it's the end, right? But it's also the beginning. Right? So our Gurudev, our Gurudev gave us the gift of our eternal life. Now, that is what he gave us. And we don't want to have just a sentimental, you know, feeling for who he was, you know, but... But in a very serious way, we want to try to proceed in our spiritual lives, you know, nourishing, nurturing those seeds that he gave us. For ourselves and for the, for the sake of future generations also. Like who Srila Govinda Maharaj is, it's not... I like something David Shish Prabhu said that, you know, future... Was it David Shish? I don't know. Maybe it was me. <laughs> I don't remember who said it. <laughs> Maybe it was me, actually. <laughs> that future generations will come to know who he is. You know, like he's that type of Vaishnava. You know, not a Vaishnava who comes along every century. You know, every decade. But we have to really sit and understand who is Shri Govinda Maharaj. You know. And we have that duty as disciples to preserve that and to propagate that, to spread that for the benefit of future generations. You know, not, you know, not just one amongst many. You know. And you know, lastly, we don't want to go too long. I don't know. We could. But lastly, I'll say, you know, our Gurudev, he was always emphasizing the importance of Trinada Pisu Nichena, right? Turori Vasahishnu, Amani, Namana, Dena, Kirtaniya, Sada, humility, tolerance, respect. Um, you know, he embodied that himself in so many ways, and, and he also emphasized that for the protection of our own spiritual growth. And also, another, on one occasion, he made this point that, you know, if, if, we, if we want to continue in a united way, you know, as a group, as a mission, then this is indispensable. You know, that this, this creates a strong foundation, right, of any group. This creates a strong foundation. And he mentioned, you know, there was this one talk he gave one day where he mentioned, you know, we've seen there are so many great movements in the past. You know, there are many great leaders who had big movements like Napoleon, Alexander the Great. But now where are their organized, now where are their missions now, you know? And he also mentioned some of the big Vaishnava lineages, you know, and, and now, 
where are they? And you know, they've dwindled to you know, almost nothing. So he was saying, you know, if we want our mission to continue for a long time to spread the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then, then we have to try to hold this principle so, very closely to our hearts. We, where, what was that line, in, beautiful line in Chaitanya Charitamrita we read a few weeks ago? Kaviraj Goswami saying, take this verse and put it on a wreath. Well, that's right, string this verse on the, on the garland of the holy name, something like that. Very beautiful verse. So, you know, again, going back to the beginning, you know, what can we know of who Srila Govinda Maharaj was? You know, we can't. You know, but we only have some glimpse, but that glimpse was enough to capture us. And now we are living our lives, you know, trying to follow the instructions that he gave us to the best of our capacity. We don't have anything else to do. <laughs> There's nothing better to do. There's nothing more meaningful that we could possibly do with our lives. And our only prayer is that we may have more, more and more inspiration and more capacity to do that. You know, to fulfill his desire you know, for ourselves, for others, for his mission, for his Guru Maharaj, and so on. May we become pure instruments of His divine will, His divine grace, now and forevermore. Jai Shodakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Tari Yetiro Bhav Mahamahot Savatiti Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Rakshak Shri Dhar Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Ganharva Govinda Sundar Juki Jai Nantakoti Vaishnava Vinda Ki Jai Samagata Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai Shri Hadinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Pimanande Om Shri 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 Shri